Yeah, you, you asked me about that Dixieland band and uh, and the letter, and I forgot to answer that. I I, I wrote the P.S. on the uh, on the back of your envelope, you know. But it was kind of a weird situation because you know, like they they had the big Spiderbeck festival down here for three days, and uh, I had gone I think one afternoon last year when they had it, and I'm not really crazy about Dixieland, but but I, then again, I've never really listened to it, you know. I've never been exposed to it. Uh, that much, so uh, I decided, okay, I have an opportunity here to go down and hear a lot of good music, you know, I, I can afford it, and so I'm going to do it, so I went down, and uh, the first afternoon, uh, first morning, I went down, went down pretty early, and uh, I was walking along, and had a lot of streets blocked off, you know, in downtown Davenport, and uh, I was walking around, the sun was just coming up, and it was going to be a beautiful day, you know, hot, like 90 degree weather, but very clear and sunny and really nice. And a lot of merchants were, uh, had their goods out in the street, you know, and there was people selling all different kinds of art and everything. And uh, uh, there was a flatbed truck, and there was this band setting up, you know. And, and the day, the night before in the newspaper, I'd read about this group, uh, Max Colley's Rhythm Age. And the paper said that they looked more like a rock and roll band than a Dixieland band. That these guys uh, had come over from England, you know. So I, I, this, this has got to be these guys because they all dressed, you know, like uh, like I used to dress, or I, you know, but they still do dress uh, in my casual moments, you know, blue jeans, and long sh shoulder length hair, and, and beards and stuff, you know. And most of these. Dixieland bands were really, you know, uh, playing it up to the hilt with the uh, candy striped shirts and the red pants and the, you know, straw hats and junk. And, you know, I was watching these guys and, you know, like they got an old beat up drum set and stuff. And uh, But when they kicked off, God, it was such a uh, magnetism, you know. The communication with this band was just unbelievable. It's really, it's just, you know, amazing. It really freaked me out. So, uh, I saw a lot of the other bands. I had heard about this one group called Bill Allred's uh, band. They were from Florida. And Bill Allred was originally from Davenport. But I heard all kinds of good things about them, you know, how great they were. And so right after I saw Max Collin, I went out on, a, on one of the riverboats and uh, watched Bill Allred. And they were just a drag, you know, a real disappointment. And so I, I, I uh, Saw these Max Collie groups as much as I could, and I bought a, I bought their their album, and uh, talked to one of the guys, you know, the bass player, and just for a little bit, because they, I guess, you know, I I, I get kind of shy, and this guy was kind of shy, and uh, I'm sure he gets approached a lot by people, you know. And, uh, anyway, they had they were decided to hold jam sessions in the in a in the bottom room of uh, the hotel Blackhawk, and the first night I I didn't go. The second night I went down there after work, it was about 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning, and uh, went, and it was like, you know, 500 people crammed into this room, you know, 2 in the morning, right? And uh, nothing was really happening. And uh, the band that was playing was kind of screwed up, you know, and they weren't really too good. But I'd, I had uh, <clears throat> spoken to my friend Craig Dove, who, who plays bass across the river, and I told him I'd you know, we agreed to meet there after we each got off work. So he got off work at 2 in the morning, and he drove over, and we met. We sat around, we drank a beer, you know, and uh, uh, we were just about to go, and all of a sudden, in comes the bass player and Max Colley himself, you know, uh, and the clarinet player was already there, and their banjo player came in, you know. And so I went over to his kid who had been playing tube, and I said, hey, who's playing drums, man? Nobody, why don't you, uh, you know, just sit down? So I was nervous as shit because I never played, you know, Dixieland before. You know, I heard it and it's not, I don't know. But anyway, uh, I sat down and I tuned the drums up a little bit, you know, and uh, it was kind of neat on the snare drum. There was a, a golden plaque built right inside of the snare drum and it said that the, the drum had, had been custom made for Louis Belson uh, by Bob Grouso who's a drum manufacturer, right? So, there I was, and they kick off these songs, you know, and I was doing pretty good, you know, I was hanging right in there and stuff, and the guys were really swinging, you know, and uh, people would, you know, call back, like, you know, uh, cues to me and stuff like that, and I was doing all right. 
And one time, I had a habit of playing with my uh, eyes closed. And so, uh, and they were playing one song, and everybody was taking solos. So I'm playing to have my eyes closed. And I looked up, and everybody said so, mentioned something about the drums, and everybody was pointing to me. So I had decided before I even sat down with the drums that, you know, I wasn't going to push for solos. Uh, because, you know, I didn't know, you know, I felt uneasy. You know, different drum sets than the one I'm accustomed to. I wasn't that familiar with the music. And there's a thing I've learned, you know, uh, when in doubt, play time. You know, just keep straight time. Don't fool around, you know. Don't just throw something in for the hell of it, you know. Uh, but anyway, these guys all started looking around, and I thought for sure that uh, they wanted a drum solo. So I thought, oh, okay, what the hell, you know. So everybody cuts, and I start a drum solo, and all of a sudden, all these guys were like, oh, no, you know. And and I go, huh, what, what's up? You know, and they go, okay, go ahead, go ahead, you know, keep playing, you know. So after that, I felt really bad. And, and as I think back, I think... What happened was that they wanted everybody to stop, and it was just going to be uh, a trombone thing from Max College, you know. But um, I felt really bad after that, you know, so I just got off the drum set and I let somebody else play. But it really, I mean, I, what I did, it was a good solo, and it fit, and, you know, it was just that uh, I wasn't aware of what was going on in the front line, you know. And so, but I learned something, and I had a guess, you know, and it was, uh, it was uh, a lot of fun uh, playing with those guys.